Hello students. Today in this video lecture, I am going to talk about the concept of routing in the network layer little bit in detail. Now routing, uh, let's just uh, first talk about what is the meaning of router. Internet is a combination of various networks, combination of different types of networks which are connected with the help of router. When a packet goes from a source to destination, it has to pass to various through various routers. How many routers totally depends upon the length of the network until it reaches its destination network. Now, what is the role of router in the, on the network? Now, router will always have what is known as a routing table. We already saw the details of the routing table in my previous video lecture. And it has to, router will always refer to its routing table when the packet is ready to be forwarded. The routing table actually gives the optimum path for the packet so that it can be traveling to its destination network. Now, this routing tables, what I am talking about, can be either of the static type or dynamic type. Now, all the static routing table are the ones with manual entries. Dynamic routing table, as the name suggests, are the ones which are updated automatically based on the real-time changes happening on the network. Now, this real-time changes which happens on the network could be that the link is down or the path, a bit better, shorter path is available for the packet to reach its destination. So, these real-time changes are incorporated in the routing table then my routing table becomes the dynamic routing table and the need of the hour in today's internet is dynamic routing table because our internet on our internet various changes are happening which needs to be updated at on real time so that all the things can be taken into consideration so that packet reaches its destination safely and in the specified period of time and to its correct destination without any error. So, the dynamic routing tables are the ones which are used in today's internet as compared to static routing tables. So, just uh, uh, in, one, uh, at, uh, in one look, we can just say that a static routing table contains information which is entered manually and usually it remains unchanged. Whereas a dynamic routing table is updated periodically as I said depending upon the real time changes happening on the network. Now this dynamic routing takes place with the help of various protocols such as RIP, OSPF or BJP. Now this BGP or RIP or OSPF, these protocols we are going to look at in my next video lectures in detail. So, I am not going to talk about them right now. Now, let's focus on a, what is the meaning of routing algorithm and routing protocol. A routing protocol, protocol as you already know that it is a set of rules or set of procedures which helps the router on the, in, on the internet to inform the other routers or other nodes of the various changes which are taking place on the network. That is in short, it allows the routers to share the information about whatever they know about the network to their neighbors or to the other nodes or to the other routers. So, routing protocol is a very very important part of your network. Now, next comes the routing algorithm. Now, routing algorithm is that part of the network layer software algorithm naturally is going to be a software which is responsible for deciding which output line the incoming packet should take so that it reaches its destination in a particular smooth manner and it reaches without any error. So, routing protocol and routing algorithms are very very 
important parts of the process of routing. Now, let's talk about in short, what is the meaning of unicast routing? Now, unicast routing, as the name suggests, uni means one. It, it will have one source and one destination. In other words, it's one-to-one -one relationship. In unicast routing, when a router receives a packet, it forwards the packet through one of its po ports. Of course, the port will be defined in the routing table. And it forwards it or it routes it so that it can reach its destination or it can reach its next hop. Now, we are talking about unicast routing because all the routing protocols which I mentioned earlier, that is RIP or OSPF or BGP, they all belong to unicast routing protocol. That's why I'm just talking in brief about what is the meaning of unicast routing. Now, as I told you that mostly the process in on the internet is dynamic routing. Naturally, the routing tables are going to be dynamic routing tables. Now, these dynamic routing tables decides on real time based on the routing algorithm ki which path or which best or optimum path should be taken by the packet to reach its destination. Now, how the measurement is done? The measurement is done by a parameter which is called a metric. A metric is a technical word for a cost which is assigned for passing through a network and the total metric of a particular route is equal to the sum of the matrices of the networks that comprise the route. So always to find the optimum path the cost of the network or the metric of the that particular path is found out so that dynamic routing decision can be taken by a router to decide which path should be taken. The path with the least cost will be always chosen by the router if it has to select between multiple paths. So you got to remember this that Cost is a deciding factor or metric of a particular path is a deciding factor to decide which path the packet will take out of the multiple paths available. And this decision lies with the router. And it is recorded of course in the routing table. Alright. Okay. So before we go further, you should just know what is the routing architecture which is present in the internet. Now, you should remember some facts. The very first fact you should be remembering is that nobody owns the whole internet. The parts of the internet are owned and administered by various organizations as you are aware such as ISPs that is internet service providers, government offices, research institutes, companies, universities, etc. To un the entire idea of routing is based on division of the internet into various parts which are called as autonomous systems. We call it in short form as AS. These AS are independently administered by individual organizations. That means each administrative <coughs> authority uses its own uses its own routing protocol within the autonomous system. Now let's look at this particular structure of an autonomous system or AS. AS is a group of networks and the routers under the authority of single administrator. In this diagram you can see various types of AS which are autonomous systems. Here there are various routers which are also being shown. Now this routing architecture is based on the idea of autonomous system. Now, uh, we have various types of routing protocols. Now, routing protocols are broadly divided into two types, the interior and the exterior. Another name for interior or exterior is intradomain, that is interior, and interdomain, that is exterior. Now, let's look at this with the help of this particular diagram. 
if the routing takes place within one autonomous system it is called as internal routing or inter domain sorry intra domain routing if the routing takes place between different as autonomous system then it is called as external routing or inter domain routing so inside is intra and in between two autonomous system is inter or external i hope that is clear to all of you now under this intra domain i have got two types of methods which can be used or two types of uh, ways in which it can be done one is called as distance vector routing and another one is link state routing under distance vector routing i have got a protocol which is routing information protocol or rip and under link state routing i have got protocol which is ospa open shortest path first under external routing protocols or inter domain i have got a method which is path vector and this method is used by a protocol called bgp that is border gateway protocol now distance vector routing is a method and the algorithm that is used for this is called as bellman ford algorithm very very important i will be solving some problems on this bellman ford algorithm link state routing is a method and the algorithm that is used for link state routing is called as dijkstra's algorithm again i will be solving some problems in my next videos which are important as far as exams are concerned all right so this is a scenario of the various routing protocols so you got to understand three things intra domain may i have got distance vector method under this uh, distance vector is a method of the routing under this the algorithm is bellman ford and the protocol is rip link state is a method of routing under this the algorithm is dijkstra's algorithm and ospf is a routing protocol and external protocols may path vector is a method and bgp is a protocol now in my next video i will talk in detail about bellman ford algorithms and links sorry bellman ford algorithm the method which is related is distance vector method and i will be also talking about link state routing and dijkstra's algorithm thank you students